Hey guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors again. We are going to talk today about a fun winter fishery that you guys can get out and enjoy and in fact just opened up yesterday here in Puget Sound. We're talking about the winter blackmouth fishery. This is an absolute blast to catch some 5 to 10 pound Chinook that are great eating and just a fun way to pass the time when steelhead is kind of in that transition mode from A run to B run and uh, those that have the ocean boats and the opportunity for you guys to get out in the water uh, get the gear kind of checked down and make sure everything's working here for the spring and uh, so what we're going to cover today is just kind of how to get set up for blackmouth fishing it's very similar to what you do during the summer for Chinook but uh, things do alter slightly so we're going to cover a lot of cool stuff of what to use and kind of just the general setup so here we go. Alright, so the first thing, you're going to be using downriggers. And most of Puget Sound, especially because area 9, 8, 1, and 8, 2 just opened up, I primarily go and fish area 9. It's where I'm most familiar with. And we're going to be using downriggers for this whole fishery. So you're basically anywhere from 50, 60 feet of water to 120, 150, and you're pounding the bottom. The thing is with these blackmouth this time of the year is they are ch chasing bait fish and chasing that bait fish near the bottom. A lot of what these fish are targeting is going to be smaller herring and uh, potentially candlefish if you have those in that area. So these are juvenile chinook is why they call them blackmouth. They have to be a legal size of 22 inches or larger and a lot of what you find is in that 5-6 pound range. So a lot of these fish are you know, staying near the estuary, staying here in Puget Sound to grow before they start traveling out to the ocean. So there potentially can be quite a few fish around, especially on opener times. And we just have had some pretty gnarly weather, so I haven't been able to get out at this point. But what makes it fun is that uh, if you know where to go with the tides, you can get on fish pretty quickly. And so because we're using downriggers, uh, one of the things you want to really do is make sure all of your downrigger cables or your braid is in good order before you go out in the water make sure everything works obviously all the gear check down so that's the first thing I'm doing the second thing I started doing after I took a couple tips from some buddies was to run these silver horde triangle flashers off of my downrigger ball and now what this allows you to do is swivel up top clips to your actual cable then you run a bungee off the bottom to your rigger ball off the back here of the triangle you can put your clip that goes to your main line now what's nice about these is it helps to keep your gear kind of more tracked so your downrigger ball isn't rolling all over the place but the biggest thing is this acts as another flasher in the water you can get a fish to swim by, see this, turn around, and then look to find your gear. So it opportunity wise, if you have one or two of these on your boat with each or you know, sorry, one with each downrigger on each side of the boat, you potentially are drawing in way more fish. These are super glow. Um, there are models that are just flashy, but this time of the year, this green spatterback is a very productive one, or just white because of the amount of light that this can put off deeper in the water column. So we'll move next to then, you got your downrigger set up, you're ready to go, you gotta pick kind of a rod selection. There's tons of good ones out there for downrigger rods. You want something that has a nice backbone but has a good sensitive parabolic bend um, because you wanna be able to see those light takes. Sometimes it's just a couple head shakes and that's it. Other times it'll pop the clip itself and those are the best ones because you don't have to do anything. But you want a soft rod too to take care of the ability to spot shakers. Because if you're running smaller gear in profile size, there is a lot of potential to get shakers. And you don't want to be trolling around one of those for a half hour because that may have been your bite window and you had no opportunity to even hook a fish because the little guy was on there the whole time. So what I have started to run in the last three, four, five years now is these Velocity. Uh, this is the Salmon Extreme series and really just the nine 
was this the 902 medium light it's a perfect downrigger rod all around I'm running the salt water I'm running it for my sockeye paired up with a really nice um, high capacity reel I got 20 pound test this is a perfect setup um, velocity makes a recon reel that pairs up very nicely with this as well so it's just all preference um, but this is my choice is this velocity rod I've caught some big fish on it, it holds up very well and really does uh, for a great rod but you know there's a lot of Shimano makes some you can go with the uh, mooching style rods with the open face reels or like a fly reel kind of one to one drag ratio so there's just a lot of stuff you guys can go with but preference for me is the velocity route and then you got your rod selected your reels picked out something that can hold a lot of line that yeah, I say at minimum you go 15 pound test but 20 is probably where you want to sit around um, and once you have your rods then you can start to go the next step and you need a good flasher so they're just like with rods there are hundreds and hundreds of different selections of flashers to go with and it can kind of get overwhelming it's just like going into a car lot and seeing all the different makes and models I'd really say pick a couple with glow UV and some kind of color pattern that you like but glow and UV are two of the the things that I have on all of mine and just fish them it's confidence deal you put the stuff in front of those fish you're more than likely gonna get bit so there's no need to have 7,000 flashers just because just pick a few and start that point now as far as brands go that I like to use I really like running the extractor Dick Knight flashers um, it allows you once you hook a fish to slide up the line and you're not dealing with as much of that flasher fighting against you um, this one happens to be a purple haze works really well on those sunny days or sometimes when you need a lot more UV light here's a glow on one side UV on the other moon jelly you can even see on this one it's got where it's dragging the bottom where we're trolling this one's been really productive but there's other great ones like the hotspot flasher here I think it's the Mountain Dew Crush that one works really well uh, another one here happens to be just a glow on one side silver the other so preference wise you guys can go ahead um, and choose really whatever you like they all are very good um, you get past the flashers and you have your options of a ton of variety of lures to go with um, mostly what I like to run because it's so much less hassle is spoons uh, you can run plugs you can run spoons hoochies bait they're just I can go through it all and I'll briefly touch as much as I can here but uh, to keep it simple mainly I run spoons I can uh, quickly turn and do some different things on the boat without having to worry about re rebating, resenting, all those different things. So spoons allow you a lot to work with. Now there's been some you know cool ones that have come out in the market. Silver Horde this year just came out with the new um, Silver Knight in the Herring Aid. This one's going to be a really good one um, as I've had success using the normal Herring Aid color in the past so this just adds more properties for the silver plating to reflect light maybe in your shallower fishing conditions so it could be very good now I have if you guys have paid attention to some of my videos had really good success with the Wonder Bread James Goal of Goals Custom Lures had did these up and uh, done well on Blackmouth, done well on Summer Kings um, those are really good. The tried and true many also know the um, Coho Killer size spoon. So I got it all tangled up here, but same herring aid pattern, but the Coho Killer style works really well when you have the right bait fish imitations around. Um, I started even doing some custom holy moly ones for myself some candle fish patterns that I'm gonna have some kits soon so stay tuned for that but these these spoons have been really good in my trial testing um, 
a lot of stuff guys it's all preference to what you guys want to do and use it's all profile for what the baits around so you can go even these small tiny spoons when you have really small herring that are present but you have to be careful there's the potential to hook a lot of juvenile fish on these smaller stuff so running these four and a half five inch spoons are generally going to get you more keeper size fish and keep a lot of the shakers off uh, going away from spoons you can look something at plugs and there's a lot of cool ones out there you have your tried and true Tomic 603's which are really a popular one and successful you have some of these cool Pogue candlefish ones that are a four inch candlefish imitation that work really well some good ones there um, old goat lures came up with a I think this is the OG2 which is more of a candlefish pattern uh, rotation in the water is more like a, a wounded bait fish that one is something I'm gonna run a little bit more this year in the boat just to see how we got um, hey guys one more thing to talk about here is the importance of scent when you're salmon fishing in particular blackmouth these fish are burying around on the bottom and like I've talked about they're digging up candlefish and herring and, and as a result really you want to have something that seals the deal to these fish that are following your stuff because you're going to attract a lot of fish but if you have a good looking bait or lure but it also has to have some kind of a smell for those fish to really commit to the last second and I really think having a good scent trail uh, of some kind is going to make the difference and really if you're fishing hoochies it could be just tipping it with a little bit of a herring strip um, if you're going to be fishing hardware like I do most of the time you want to have a good scent that you're using and for me the thing that has been the easiest and least messy is the AN Sporting Scent Stick. You guys have seen this in a lot of my videos that I use these when trolling because all you have to do is just pop the cap off, lather it up on the side of your spoon, front and back, in the water and you're fishing. Cap goes back on, this tucks back in my vest pocket or goes into the tackle bag. There's no mess at all and you're fishing. You got a good really natural scent in the water that will really help commit some more fish and I think having the scent is going to be key to making more fish commit to your guys' stuff so keep that in mind as we go here in the last portion of the gear to cover then you got you know kind of more of your rounding it out you have your hoochies and bait and frankly this time of the year like I said I run more of the spoons in preference wise but there are times when throwing a big hoochie fly, like this happens to be an Olympic tackle herring imitation, can be very productive. Or some of their um, big eye squids imitate some of what those black mouth really are feeding down there on the bottom. So it's all what you guys want to do. You guys can do just about anything if you like fishing um, for coho kind of style where you're you're a hoochie and bait you can run that on the bottom and definitely catch fish uh, some guys just happen to run a naked herring in a helmet and getting that right down the bottom and have a dummy flasher but that's all preference to you guys I love trying a lot of different things if something's not working but I'm generally starting out with spoons and I've started to a little bit more play with the plugs but uh, spoons are definitely where my confidence is in and uh, it's going to be a fun fun season and one thing that uh, I definitely want to mention for you guys that are bait goers and like to use hoochie rigs or even just your herrings in a helmet um, there's a new product out there from Leader Feeder uh, that's the bendable products company that allows you to store all of your double hook rigs and you can all wrap them up neatly and uh, keep everything organized on your boat. This can tuck right in your tackle box or you can get a boat magnet attachment and goes right to the side of your boat. So this is going to be in my boat. I'm really excited to have some of these on board and uh, keep myself more organized for this season. But 
Area 9, Area 8 1, Area 8 2, basically most of Puget Sound is open again and Blackmouth are around. I got the boat sitting in the driveway waiting for some of the snow to melt and then I am going to be hitting the water and giving it a whirl. So hope to catch you guys out there on the water. Hope this helps you guys a lot. If you like this type of video for uh, just kind of gear breakdowns and setup, give me a like and a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. There's a ton more coming. And uh, to all of our product sponsors, we really, really appreciate all the help and support that you guys give us. So 2018 is going to be an awesome year. There's so many opportunities here to go after, and I cannot wait to show you guys some killer footage as we're on the water. So thanks for tuning in, guys. This is Rick Denham with Holy Moly Outdoors signing off. Take care and fish on.